Urban Circle Training Center. We have um, a holistic uh, program here for the students. It covers uh, the life skills part, the cultural and traditional teachings, and um, along with their, their regular um, curriculum. Because of the past and what happened in the residential school, a lot of um, Aboriginal people lost their um, um, their culture, their history, uh, their language, um, just everything. And this is the goal is to bring them back to that for them to learn, to give them that opportunity, to um, I guess to to find their roots, to touch base with what happened. Uh, because a lot of students are are going through a lot of um, uh, crisis in their life and not knowing where it came from. So a lot of that helps them to rebuild that foundation for, uh, you know, to be successful, to know who they are, to um, to heal. Uh, we do a lot of that. We, we help the students, the life skills coaches, the elders, and the teachers, everybody helps them in some way. We teach them about the seven uh, sacred teachings that a lot of our people lost, <clears throat> the values, the ceremonies, um, you know, ceremonies they may never have had an opportunity to uh, to have out there in any other uh, place of learning. Um, they, uh, they get to... Um, to come to us or the life skills coaches, we work together in guiding them and helping them through the healing process. And part of that is uh, teaching them about the residential, the effects of residential school, and the trauma that that uh, children went through. So it it's passed down to the generation. So they're still carrying it. So they need to know. You don't. We believe that they cannot deal with it unless they know where it came from, the root of it. And in my own personal healing journey, that's what I have experienced because I'm a residential school survivor. And um, it's still, uh, I have my, my children, my grandchildren, now I have great grandchildren. My grandchildren are still being affected by what happened. So that's just an example of you know the students that come here some of them are adults and they they never know they never they've never known what really happened so it's a great educational experience for them to know that to know the history and to build their lives back up after you know knowing that Don't we go know. anywhere from um Correct me, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it's eight, like and when they become an adult here in Manitoba, it's 18, right? So it's 18 to any age. We've had people in their 60s here. The programs we offer is is, is based on the teachings of, of, of Aboriginal people, and it's successful because the students um, have that opportunity to um, to deal with their issues and also to to be recognized as <clears throat> an equal to everybody. Um, they are um, they are assisted and counseled and they're given that one-to-one -one, um, help, you know, counseling, emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental, you know, like all those components are taken into consideration when a student comes in here, you know, we offer any, any and all kinds of help because of the experience that we have, um, the wisdom and the knowledge of the elders that's passed on to them. Um, like what, I know there's no other place that I know that exists. When I went to school, there was nothing like that. So this is an exceptional, you know, and, and a place of learning. And, you know, when it comes time to graduation, we don't have to talk about it. They'll share what what they have got here, what they got here. So we look at the whole person's life. We don't just look at the academics. Like somebody could be really smart, but they could carry a lot of stuff that's going to uh, affect their life down the line. 
you know, if they don't deal with it, if we don't deal with stuff, it's, it continues to surface. But if people know um, what they need to do to to better their life or to to heal from the multi, uh, multi-generational trauma that they've been through, in our teachings, in our life, we, we don't uh, separate anything. We don't separate our emotional, our spiritual, our mental, and our physical. We try to include everything in there. That's why it's so... It's it's so different and it's more effective with Indigenous students. I'm not sure how it would work for any other people, but um, it uh, it gives them an, an understanding and something they could connect and relate to for once in their life. Um, I'll just give you an example. When I was younger, I went, I attend, I attended. Um, one of our traditional ceremonies. And I never felt so much that I belonged somewhere. And that sense of belonging and finding your roots is probably the most special experience a person could have. And so that's what we help them to find. That's the key for our people. And I see it happening all around, you know, when when people um, connect to that. And when the students connect to that, like they walk in these doors the first day, you wouldn't believe it's the same person at the end of that 10 months or six months, whatever, how long their course is. Because they found something. They found themselves. They found their spirit. They made that connection. So they grow from that. We encourage students to look within themselves to find what they want to do in their life, to search and recognize the gifts they have within themselves. Because in our teachings, we believe that everyone is gifted and talented with something special and that they have a purpose for being here, a purpose to fulfill on earth. So that's the other thing that, that helps them because, and then they begin their search. And uh, you know, in a positive way, they go to positive things like the ceremonies, the sun dance, the vision quest, our traditional medicine camp, you know, they, they just search and they just go and that's where they find their way. There has been a big change um, in the, all the years of my life. When I go back, when I was uh, um, a young person, uh, starting, um, you know, like going to school and searching for my, for, for who I am, um, there, what I can see is a big change happening uh, because even right now it's happening with, uh, you know, connecting our people back to the things that were so important to them. And one of them is connecting them, reconnecting them back to the land, back to their, their roots and having them and not just teaching it on a, on a blackboard or whatever, or <clears throat> video or having them actually experience those um, those things. Uh, for example, being at the camp and actually going into the sweat lodge, um, being in nature, being in that natural environment, learning from that, learning from being on the land. Land-based training, they call it now. Yeah. We've been doing that all our lives, myself and uh, Elder Stella Blackbird that was uh, part of this, but she retired. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been doing that for years. Now we have a camp where, where we teach right on the land. We have a connection. Uh, we have a link from Urban Circle to our medicine camp. So if there's any students that want to further uh, learn about their culture, then we keep that door open for them to come there. And right now we're work, our, our vision is, um, I guess, to... To see that happening, to have that land-based thing, because a lot of the students here, they, they live in the city. They don't have that opportunity to re reconnect with the creation out there, the land, the water, the trees, you know, all that. I think that's so important, and it's also a very important part of their healing. Um, and to be in an environment like that is it has a lot to do with, you know, the the energy and 
you know, like a lot of people wouldn't understand that, but but we know because we experience that all the time when we're working with people out there, you know, with all the stuff that's um, that's happening now. We see it all around us. It's so negative, this environment. Like I come here and I can't believe how negative, how things are, you know, happening in the city, the violence, the drugs, you know, the stuff that's killing our people. But you go out there and it's a totally different world. It's like two different worlds. And I think it's important for people to reconnect to that so they can um, they can find that, uh, that stillness and make that reconnection spiritually. And our people really believe in the spiritual part of um, um, connecting connecting with that because that's how we get our guidance that's how we get our we find ourselves we find our purpose when we make that spiritual connection and it has nothing to do with religion you know not the way it was pushed on us in residential school that was alien to me it was alien I I could never get it I think for um for the other educational institutions the government and you know, all the people that have um, taken that away from us, they need to learn. They need to learn what we know. They need to be educated because obviously they're not because there's still lots of racism out there. There's a lot of judgment about um, Native traditional ways. There's a lot of uh, people that think that we don't know who we, we don't know anything that we needed to be um, educated or we had to be Christianized or whatever. They need to turn that around and they need to start learning. It's their turn. They talk about reconciliation, you know, with the residential school stuff. We are doing, we are working on, on ours, on our, on our healing. Because to me, reconciliation is healing. Not just us, but the people out there that, you know, um, inflicted that stuff on us. The government, the churches, um, you name it, the residential school, the people that work that, you know, like, I think that that needs to happen, that has to, because we can't, you know, if, you have, if you're working on relationships, individual relationships, um, everybody has to do their part, you know, and it's not happening on their part, on, the rest of the world or whoever isn't involved with it you know it's but we are doing we are doing our part because i can see it growing in my own uh first nation um we did a lot of healing in our community and um that's why i'm sitting here today to share that and that was my journey learning about myself, my teachings, so that I can pass that on, that wisdom and that knowledge. And having that understanding and having that acceptance of who we are, because I know we're not accepted in our own country by, by our, own, uh, our own politicians or, you know, churches or you name it, like we're not really accepted. And I've worked with churches, but I stopped because they weren't doing their part. It's not happening, you know. I can see that, and even our, you know, like all the things that were supposed to happen, they're not happening. The racism is getting worse. As far as I'm concerned, it's getting worse. I can see it because when I go home and I come back to the city, like I face it every day when I go in a store, when I, you know, whatever I do, it, it's it's there. You know, it's it's sad, but it. It is, and people don't want to look at that. They have their heads in the sand, and they just don't want to admit it, that they're still treating uh, our people like that. So they can continue to do that, but we're going to continue to grow and to heal, and we're getting to be a very strong nation again. And I guess that's where this is going to take us, you know, um, uh, the road or the path that we're taking right now, like in right here in Urban Circle, you know, that's a very good example. Because I don't know of any other institution, even if it's Aboriginal run, that really does the work that we do here.
because we really care about the students. We treat them as an equal to us, no matter what kind of position we are or education we have. We never look down upon our people or we never try to be above them or below them. You know, okay. It's about equality and that's our teachings of, of you know, our creation. We're equal to everything. And um, I hope that, you know, people start waking up because our people have woken up already long ago. I know I did over 40 years ago, you know. I'm 66 now and I started my healing journey when I was a young woman. I lived in a city, I experienced all that stuff. Um, and I think it's gotten worse than better. Yeah, that reconciliation thing is not even, where it's not even true. There's an example. We lost our land in 1930s. I just met with Riding Mountain National Park. <clears throat> I sit on a board there and uh, we had made an agreement and a lot of the agreements are not being kept so they don't respect our, like we have medicines out there. Those, those are our life, our traditional medicines. Um, that we pick out there and they still continue to try to spray the land with chemicals and that, you know, the place is very, is clean. There, there isn't any kind of uh, environmental uh, pollutants that are really there because there's nothing there. It's just uh, pure land and, you know, like there's no industry, there's no you know, anything like that's going to cause uh, um, chemicals to affect the land. And they sometimes they go ahead, they're supposed to consult with us when they're going to spray because we pick our medicine certain places and we can't go and pick them where it's been sprayed because it's going to affect people, you know, and it's not going to work. So, you know, uh, and... It, it's just, um, it's just sad that people think that, that they can continue doing that and get away with it, you know. And this is facts, this is true, we, I experience those things every day, you know, like different uh, uh, experiences of, uh, of uh, not not being listened to, not, you know, our word, not being taken seriously or, you know, people just walking all over us. And that's how, that's how I feel. And I, when I speak, I don't beat around the bush. I say what comes from my heart. And um, that's what our teachings are, to be true and honest. And if I lie to people, then I'm lying to myself. So I just speak the truth. It might hurt people, or people might say I'm negative, but I'm not. I'm speaking my, I'm speaking my truth to protect what's ours.